Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce. It's the backup channel backing Celeb up and bringing you all the breaking news. In 2019, Cardi B sued YouTuber Tasha K for defamation after Tasha K accused Cardi B of having a sexually transmitted disease. The case went to the Georgia Federal Court in January of 2022, where Cardi testified in court that she felt, quote unquote, extremely suicidal over Tasha K's claims, adding, quote, I felt defeated, depressed, and I didn't want to sleep with my husband, end quote. As a result of the evidence, the court ruled in Cardi's favor and stated that Tasha K published slanderous and defamatory statements. The judge also ordered Tasha K to pay Cardi $3,868,753.47. Now, after the ruling, Tasha K continued to talk smack online and she refused to take the defamatory post down until she was threatened with jail time. Anyways, in an effort not to pay Cardi her coins, Tasha K appealed the verdict in 2023, and on Tuesday, the court finally shot down Tasha's appeal and ordered her to pay up. In response to the final verdict, Tasha K jumped on Instagram and addressed her fan base that she calls the Winos. Tasha said, quote, We lost the appeal against Cardi B. Sad day. But I'm going to be all right. I appreciate all your love and support throughout this fight. Today we throw in the white flag. What happened will never happen again. To Cardi and her team, I apologize. Sincere. We live and we learn. End quote. In a follow-up post, Tasha K also posted a photoshopped picture of herself working at McDonald's with a caption that said, quote, talk about a check my mouth can't cash, end quote. And then after that, she came back and said, quote, hashtag Tasha K gets a job. I'll let y'all know what part-time gig I get so I can pay off this darn debt. Hashtag, I ain't got it, but I'm gonna get it. At McDonald's, at Wendy's, at Burger King, any positions available, I will do anything. Okay, so basically to sum it up, Tasha K was like, I'm so sorry, Cardi. I'll do anything to pay off my debt. I'll do anything, Cardi. I should have never lied and said you had herpes on YouTube. <laughs> well, anyway, after your girl Tasha K went on the apology tour, a whole lot of people came through in the comments. And one person said, quote, aha, you're going to make love McDonald's and Cardi having it her way. End quote. And then another person came through and said, quote, fix the ice cream machine while you're there. End quote. <laughs> hey, yo, why is the ice cream machine at McDonald's always broken? But anyway, back to the story. Everybody was not against Tasha because somebody came through and said, quote, Tasha, you may not want to hear this, but I'm sorry you didn't prevail in this lawsuit. And it's crazy to see that so many black people cheering her on when they wasn't there from the beginning. I thought I was doing something right. You owned up to it, and that's all that matters. End quote. No, that's not all that matters. See, too many people are running around out in these streets, and they think that they could do whatever they want, and as long as they come back and they say, I'm sorry, that it's all good. Sometimes the things that you do have consequences. As a grown-behind woman, you know darn well the consequences that you rolling around talking about Cardi has a STD can have. You don't know how many arguments that woman ended up having with Offset in the late, late hours of the night because of that crap that you said. And her marriage could have ended in divorce. Why? Because you wanted to get a few coins on YouTube. I'm telling you, Tasha K was so pressed to get a few coins in her pocket, so she got out of pocket, and that's why all of her coins are now in Cardi's pocket. Hey yo, on to the next story. A lot of people are trying to come for your man Deion Sanders after he made a statement to his football team about what it means to be a man prior to a recent practice. Before the team's warm-up, Primetime spoke to his team about manhood and said, quote, See, you all want to be the man until it's time to be the man. Because the man, sooner or later, is going to have to prove he can fight. And you're going to have your back up against the wall sooner or later. And you're going to have to come out fighting. And I want to make sure you got that in you. Because I never want to go into a bar, into a club, into a situation where I've got somebody with me and he don't want to fight. End quote. Look, you might disagree with me, but I agree with your boy Dion 100%. I do not rock with people who I know cannot fight.
And that's just something that goes back to high school. And that's not saying I want to rock with people who start fights or get into fights all the time. That's just saying that if a fight does break out, I need to know that my peoples can finish it. I'm telling you, when I was in college, I met a group of girls, right? They was mad cool, but they talked too much ish. And then we went out one night, we were getting ready to get jumped, and these chicks are running for the door. I was like, I cannot rock with these chicks. I mean, I'm a pacifist, so I don't want anybody to fight, but I at least want to know that you can. Listen, let me know what you think about what your boy Deion Sanders said. Does a man need to know how to fight? And also, does a woman need to know how to fight? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving your comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. But while we're talking about women fighting, we got to discuss your girls Tamar Braxton and Candy Burris. The other day, your girl Candy was online and she was discussing the fact that when Escape was in talks to do a concert with SWV, she wasn't trying to sacrifice her group's booking fee just to co-headline with the other girl group. Because according to Candy, Escape's going rate to do a concert was three to four times higher than SWV's. Now, when going into more detail about these fees, Candy said, quote, I don't want to speak on exactly the fees that they get. But at that time, our fee was three to four times what their fee is. So why would we agree to split our fee and split it in half? That means we're lowering what we get just so they could say they felt comfortable, end quote. Well, after your girl Candy made that comment, Tamar Braxton came into the comment section and said, quote, Imagine having the biggest ego for the most non-singing A person in the music industry. Stream my new hit, Hashtag Change, where I pay homage to the amazing SWV. End quote. Now, everybody knew that there was always beef between Tamar and Candy. However, we all thought that the beef was deaded after the two R&B singers appeared on Celebrity Big Brother together. But, during a recent appearance on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Tamar said that the beef is back on because Candy and her husband Todd Tucker stepped to her and threatened her on some rah-rah-ish after a recent event. When talking about being threatened by Candy and Todd, Tamar said, quote, It really did happen. That ish really did happen and it was not cute. End quote. Listen, I said that I respect people who can fight. However, I don't think that you should be trying to fight every five minutes. And I don't understand. Candy Burris is like a grown woman. Why in the world are you like rolling up on people in parking lots with your husband? That makes no sense. I mean, Candy and Tamar need to have a sit down without Todd present and they need to work it out. Because in my opinion, these two would make better allies than enemies. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think about your girl Tamar and your girl Candy in the comments. Now check it out. I don't know what I've been doing for the last few years, but I was not aware that your girl Kris Jenner co-founded a church. Well, now that I know, let me share the details. In 2009, Kris Jenner co-founded the California Community Church, CCC. The church's membership fee is $1,000 a month, and as is custom, every member is required to tithe or donate 10% of their income. Now, although Khloe Kardashian and Lamar Odom were married in the church by a pastor who eventually cheated on his wife, none of the Kardashian-Jenner clan actually attend the church. Because if you remember, for a minute, they were all over there at Kanye's church. Now, according to the church's website, CCC believes in missteps and redemption. And the church's mission statement says, quote, bring your mess, we're messy too, end quote. Now, it's important to note that although Kris Jenner says that this is a legitimate church, a whole bunch of people have alleged that the church is simply a way for the Kardashians to launder money and avoid paying all of their taxes. Look, I don't know whether this church is legit or not, but I don't understand how you could be drunk on Hulu getting buck wild with Corey Gamble one minute and then in the next minute, you're running a church. I mean, could you imagine if your boy T.D. Jakes tried to do that? I mean, on Sunday, he's doing the Potter's House and then on Monday, he's on Drink Champs and he's drinking a little Douce and smoking a little burning bush. I mean, people would be losing their minds. They'd be like, oh my God, he's a Sadducee, he's a Pharisee, he's a charlatan. But I mean, the Kardashians seem to get away with stuff that other people cannot. I mean, it's very interesting. Listen, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that your girl Kris Jenner is negating all of her good works that she does in church by being drunk on Hulu? 
Now, while we're talking about the things that people have been doing on TV, recently everybody's been talking about Donald Glover's Swarm. And while they've been talking about Swarm, they've been talking about Chloe Bailey's sex scene. And every time that her sex scene comes up, everybody seems to be bringing up Haley Berry's sex scene in Munster's Ball. So recently a woman came online and she said, quote, Haley Berry is not black, she's biracial white passing. Plus, she was Hollywood's favorite. Megan Good just talked about how hard her career has been taking these types of roles. Chloe will learn the hard way. We don't make up the rules. End quote. Um, I'm totally confused right now, because even though Haley Berry is biracial, she is not white passing, nor has she ever been white passing. Haley Berry is a black woman, because white passing actually means that you can pass for white, and Haley Berry ain't passing for nobody's white. Trust me, nobody in the history of the world has ever looked at Haley Berry and been like, oh my goodness, look at that beautiful white woman. So, the chick who said this is nuts. Now, your girl Mariah Carey tried to pass at one point, but not your girl Haley Berry. Listen, you gotta know, if a person has one white parent and a black parent, the kid is black. Listen, let me know in the comments, do you agree with me or not? If two people get together, one's white, one's black, what race is the baby? And for all of you people out there who say the baby is mixed, I got another question for you. When the baby grow up and the baby gets stopped by the cops, what race is the baby? Just a little something to think about. And while you're thinking about that, let me know how you feel about your girl Chloe Bailey doing a sex scene in Swarm. Do you think that she's laying the foundations for a stellar career in acting? Or do you think that she's ruining her career before it even gets started? Now, check it out. The other day, your boy Takashi69 got jumped in an LA fitness bathroom. Three dudes sporting Crocs and socks stomped this dude out for being what they call a snitch. After your boy Takashi was pummeled, he was rushed to the hospital for care. And now, a whole bunch of people are reacting to the video of Takashi getting jumped. For example, your boy Boozy jumped on Twitter and said, quote, Laughing my A off. Snitches get stitches. Let's start a GoFundMe for this guy. We need to start a GoFundMe for this guy. Like Cookie Money say, we gotta start rewarding the real ones. End quote. Now, on the other hand, your boy Wack 100 came through and wrote, quote, It's unfortunate what happened to 6 9 He's a good guy. Life is full of lessons. This isn't about his so-called street situation. This is about decision making on both sides. The one who filmed and posted themselves will remember this day for many years to come. And 6 9 will now know that he has to move accordingly. Hashtag stay dangerous and don't hesitate. Wish him a speedy recovery. End quote. Listen, number one, Boozy is full of crap. Why? Because we don't need to be like putting these dudes up on a pedestal for beating somebody down. Two, your boy Wack 100 is sending mixed messages because in one breath, he's like, this shouldn't have happened. And then in the other breath, he's like, hashtag, stay dangerous. What the heck is that? That doesn't even make any sense. That's all over the place. But three, three dudes walked into LA Fitness, which means that they have a membership, which means that they had to have their credit cards on file. And these dudes thought it was a smart idea to jump Takashi 69 who was in the plastic pom pom shorts for something that they didn't have nothing to do with. And on top of that, you know you're being videotaped, so you're beating up the snitch for snitching while you're basically snitching on yourself. That is the dumbest thing ever. And what in the world did you accomplish? Cause Takashi's still gonna be out on the streets doing Takashi while y'all are all locked up. I mean, what do you get out of it? Like 20 years from now, you're gonna be talking to your grandkids and you're gonna be like, yeah, I remember me and my boys jumped this circus clown cause he was a snitch. <laughs> That's just dumb. Listen, I think today's video has a theme, and the theme has a moral. And the moral is, after a certain age, which is in your teens, you don't need to be out there fighting. And let's say you are out there fighting. I have no respect for people who have to jump somebody. If you're gonna throw the hands, throw the hands one on one. But you gotta understand that that right there isn't even the best recourse. Cause the best recourse is that if you got beef with somebody, pull them to the side and have a conversation with them. But listen, let me know what you think about your boy Takashi, your boy Boozy, and your boy Wack 100 in the comments. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.